All right, what is happening, everybody? Welcome to the Nexus 2021 virtual conference, and I am super excited to be here today. Uh, or you know, you've seen me uh, in uh, in a form of uh, recording, but I'm somewhere there in uh, in the live chat, so I can uh, talk uh, to you uh, in a in a in a two uh, two different uh, dimensions. I can talk to you right now in a video, and also I can talk to you in the live chat and answer your question. And obviously, I will be available to answer any question afterwards. And uh, welcome to this. Um, uh, to this uh, uh, the virtual conference where um, I'm going to be talking about the cool things and this uh, particular um, topic that I'm super excited to talk about how to use Apache Kafka uh, in uh, Kubernetes in uh, more like a cloud native and uh, GitOps and all these uh, cool things around the stream processing applications and all awesome stuff will be there. So today we're going to be talking about multiple things, um, and uh, there is a, only just a few that you see right now on your screen. So we're going to be talking about uh, the process of GitOps and what does it mean, and what does it mean for you as a developer and as a software engineer, uh, how these uh, new workflows will encourage or transform the ways how you deploy applications. I will show you how this uh, declarative approach or approach that came from Kubernetes operators changing the way how how we dealing with the configuration and, and uh, how we, you know, dealing with deployment of the software. Um, well, hopefully, we'll show you some of the cool things like serverless Kafka in the Confluent Cloud, or for example, shell operator that allow you to enable this uh, operator pattern for pretty much any um, any technology. Even though maybe it, it was not uh, developed as a cloud native from the very one, from the from first day. Anyway, so yeah. Uh, my name is Viktor Gamov, and I work as a developer advocate here at Confluent. Um, and uh, I do things around Kafka. Uh, usually you can find me on Twitter, you can find me on Telegram, you can find me anywhere uh, in the world. Uh, also, I do a YouTube channel. I do a lot of live streams, and uh, 2021 uh, taught me a few cool things about this stuff. So go check this out and subscribe to my YouTube channel as well. Uh, probably another very important slide for, uh, for this conference. You can find all the talks, uh, the code, essentially here. It's the uh, GitHub repository, and you can uh, find the links to documentations on the, all the software that I'm using, everything that you need to get started with this uh, Kafka DevOps uh, approach. All right, before I jump into the technologies, I know you're eager right now to learn what the heck is this and how this will transform the way how you're dealing with software. I want to give you a little bit a background to explain how this topic and how this subject came about in my life specifically, and that's why, why I'm talking about this. So essentially, um, traditional microservice integration in the microservices architecture, um, they were designed, maybe like a microservices 1.0, they were designed around the concept of um, calling uh, uh, the services from one source from another through some sort of R R RPC. Um, this RPC can be uh, simple as um, the, the REST HTTP, or it may be some uh, more sophisticated like uh, gRPC that allows to handle um, all like a protocols between uh, within the systems handle errors and all this kind of stuff. However, um, if uh, we need to you know talk this uh, and like uh, these multiple services need to talk to each other, um, some of this configuration, some of this uh, interaction will be cumbersome. For example, like uh, do we have a like instance of uh, database somewhere uh, close to our application that we need to replicate some of the data um, and so far and so on. So in this case, um, some of the services might have their own storage, some services might have uh, their own databases. Um, but uh, with the event streaming paradigm is the way how we can rethink and how the uh, streams of events can change our way, how we can look into the um, design of these microservice uh, systems um, rather than um, um, system 
allows us to just like exchange these messages, but it also provides the um, uh, continuous updated uh, storage that holds the stream of these events. Um, and essentially, all these um, streams, uh, they, they represent a sequence of uh, different events. Um, this sequence of uh, different events uh, might include uh, something that happened, like a purchase happened, order shipped, uh, customer registered, uh, credit card updated, and so forth and so on. And in this case, uh, the system, um, in our case, we're going to be using Apache Kafka as the event streaming system that holds this information, um, allows you and the consumer Consumers to retrieve uh, this information in a given you know point of time. The way how it changes the application architecture here, uh, the way how it changes uh, stuff between um, multiple uh, multiple systems is that in our uh, approach of uh, monolithical application, um, everything goes around usually database. So database is um, the thing where something, uh, information is recorded. Um, and it's totally fine. We designed the system that way for a very long time. However, um, designing a system that need to capture history of events or stream of events is a little bit cumbersome when we need to apply this into relational uh, structure. When is, uh, we change this to event approach, um, the system that holds it just deals with events. It doesn't need to um, somehow design uh, uh, the schema in order to handle these events. Like every record in a Kafka um, a topic, uh, topic is essentially the uh, thing where we're storing our events. Every event in our topic uh, will represent a something that is would be immutable, and in particular moment of time, any service can get access uh, to this. So in this case, we're transforming the way how we uh, service interact instead of calling services directly, they actually talking to each other through event stream system. Uh, one service can work with the event system um, and populate this data and the, another service will be able to retrieve this information whenever it's needed. Uh, when it's information, when this information about like from the orders uh, needs to be handled by payment system and after that uh, like interact with payment gateway, uh, this payment service will um, uh, retrieve this information you know, whenever it, it seems fit. Same thing with the other services, we are changing the way how we can interact. And the most importantly, some of the operations, they can happen not only uh, in a particular direction that I have here right now on my slides, but also in uh, the, another di direction. And uh, some of the uh, services might have materialized view of the stream event that allows them to, um, um, to essentially have a centralized like a database in, in uh, this particular case. So those two, uh, like a shipping service requires information about users, like user information, and it might have a, some of the local copy that will be automatically updated in the service service whenever user seems to, you know, uh, change his address. So the shipping service will be automatically update the local store instead of like a going and a user service going and calling the shipping service directly. Hey, just update information. But it seems to be like a user service don't need to do uh, this this type of stuff because it's a little bit out of um, out of uh, the the domain boundary of this particular service. So in this case, user service will just like send the event that will represent a, a notification or maybe even change of state. So some of the services can uh, exchange of a notification between each other. Some services can send information about um, about the state change. Um, and this is how this is how it looks like from perspective of technologies that we're going to be using. This is how it looks like from uh, from the point where we will be uh, doing some of the things uh, today. So um, Kafka cluster is our storage. Everything would be stored uh, inside the Kafka cluster. Um, easiest possible way how we can integrate existing systems, legacy systems into Kafka is using technology called Kafka Connect. And Kafka Connect allows to um, uh, services do not think much or like developers of the services don't need to think much about how to integrate their service where there's a connector will take care of this stuff automatically. So enough for this one for, 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 for tonight, but uh, you will see some of this technology in play uh, very soon. Also, I want to talk about the GitOps. So this is a little bit orthogonal to the thing that I just talked about. This, However, the, uh, it appears that it is a, a 
a very good approach for handling configuration management and drive some of the actions that happen in our system, that happens in our, um, in our application workflow um, through uh, that storage, that uh, uh, place where all this configuration is stored in the version control. So um, let's take a look on the version control system and how this uh, GitOps thing is, is integrated. So essentially, uh, Git represents a desired state of the system. So whatever in particular commit and particular branch, that will represent a, the current state of application. So if you want to do deployment of a certain number of nodes, uh, we always know the state is always in the Git, and uh, it works in both ways. We know that our production environment would reflect the same stuff that we have in Git, uh, and vice versa. Um, next thing is that, uh, you as a developer already used to um, this uh, cool uh, workflows that are already around for less like I don't know like maybe 10 years uh, then uh, um, systems like uh, Git and GitHub uh, become very powerful uh, powerful and very widely spread people migrated from um, some uh, different uh, version control systems to Git and uh, they start building some of the uh, tools around this uh, people love the pull request concept that uh, came from from, uh, from GitHub, um, you can do code reviews, and you can apply same tools not only for your code, which is also part of this uh, of this uh, overall technology, but also apply to some infrastructure deployment. So, like if we need to deploy those tools, if we need to go and say, hey, so we need to deploy like a few more nodes of our application or our connector or maybe our Kafka, we can easily do this using only um, only Git. Um, and uh, in this case, um, everything uh, we will see like who did what, we don't need to have uh, extra tools to compare what happened. Since we have this uh, in Git, we can always get the uh, um, uh, same tools like Git blame, we can use diffs and to see what is going on there. But this is very important now that is in uh, this system that uh, GitOps uh, will essentially do something, there's someone or something needs to drive this, something that needs to keep the stuff in synchronized fashion. So in this particular case, in my, um, in my example, there is a uh, repository of this, um, some of the environments, like I do have a folder environments and have a in, in, um, folder with uh, secrets. And there is a, um, a small tool that deployed in my Kubernetes cluster that will be constantly monitoring and constantly watching for these uh, folders in this particular uh, repository. So um, it might be listening some of the changes that happen in the Git. And after that, this operator, this Flux CD uh, software will uh, run this um, and keep things synchronized in our Kubernetes cluster. So let me do a quick stop here um, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the uh, how does it look like in a real system. So there's a couple tools that are available in, uh, uh, I will be using and you can also um, try it yourself um, because uh, I don't think we're gonna spend much time here on um, you know, figuring out what each individual tool does uh, simply because you know, we're limited with time. Um, so I'm gonna be showing how I can integrate system that is potentially not uh, Kubernetes native. Uh, so in this case, I will show how I can use serverless Kafka and Confluent Cloud um, and how I can uh, create this uh, connection, create the secrets that allows my applications, my connectors, my uh, microservices that will be running inside my Kubernetes cluster interact with this external system. And in this case, uh, I will be using this uh, CCloud as a CLI. Kube Control and Helm, this is basically, you know, things that you already have uh, if you're doing anything with Kubernetes. Kube Control, it's a tool that allows you to interact with Kubernetes. Helm is a tool that allows you to package your software and provide some of the templates and stuff like that. Uh, Flux C uh, CTL allows to interact with this operator that deployed in your Kubernetes cluster and drive all these uh, GitOps things. K K3D, fantastic tools for local development. Uh, you can start your Kubernetes cluster very easy. Um, you still can use the things like um, Minikube or um, 
mini shift uh, and uh, docker for desktop but uh, the uh, uh, k3d it's uh, like super easy super uh, super fun to use we're going to be using tool called um, sealed uh, secrets uh, we're going to approach of sealed secrets the way how we can transform our secrets from the system how we can store the secret in, in our git repository and after that um, we will make sure that nothing really uh, will no one steal our secrets and how this will uh, handled in a, in a sealed secret fashion. And some other tools, GQ and uh, the YQ. Um, and the uh, operator pattern that we're doing uh, with, uh, with Flux uh, and some other things, um, we're going to be talking about another operator in a few, a few seconds before I, will, um, uh, before I jump in. Now, the, uh, this guy uh, or this particular lady, essentially it's a brain that sits inside your Kubernetes cluster and uh, this brain will um, integrate with some of the resources that are available in your uh, Kubernetes cluster. So specifically it will be uh, updating some of the deployments, updating some of the, um, the secrets and so far and so on, this stuff will be propagated. So in the way how it looks like essentially, this operator will be seed uh, inside and uh, waiting for particular uh, resources to update um, and uh, these resources uh, may be um, some of the custom resources or it may be some of the existing resources and based on that it will invoke certain procedures so in this particular case like when I want to create new cluster in Confluent Cloud I will submit a, a new resource that called uh, the cl cluster um, and after that uh, the um, another operator that I will show you um, in a few seconds uh, will uh, run all this stuff that is required or what is um, what is needed. So let me uh, quickly switch here and I will show you. So what do you see right now? It is my uh, Kubernetes cluster. There's a bunch of stuff is running here. I do have, um, um, if I will show all these uh, uh, namespaces, my Flux uh, fellow is uh, also here, so I'll just uh, show you. And uh, there's, you know, some something is going on. As you can see here, it's it's in a constant uh, loop of uh, listening changes that happened in uh, my. Um, in my repository. So essentially, if I would go and do something, um, some stupid things, uh, for example, I can do, say, uh, get uh, services, and uh, if I will go get services connect, um, if I would see there's just like only one instance, if I will do um, okay, edit deployment connect service, like if I would just go and uh, manually submit number of desired replicas. So what's going to happen here? So I'll just say two. Um, and after that, essentially what it should do, what it should do, uh, it cr should create a number of instances, but uh, two number of instances. However, so git, um, git ops operator will, um, will listen this information uh, and um, will not allow me to do so. So if I will get back here, it'll do things like k uh, get uh, not services, say what we did, edit, edit deployment. Um, in this case, it still will bring this number of replicas from uh, from two to one. So why is that? So I went directly to Kubernetes cluster and changed resources di directly. So my uh, the flux operator is uh, listening for those resources and saying, hey, so there's looks like it's some discrepancy. And in the Git, I do have um, I do have a with just only one instance that I need to uh, need to deploy. And in this case, it will cause some of the some of the trouble. So something so, so something something is not add up. So that's why the flux will go and make sure all these things will keep in sync with the Git. Remember what I said in the very beginning: Git is the source of truth of this data. So as as I mentioned in the very beginning, Flux actually um, uh, looking for a few uh, environments here. So it would look into environments folder 
and it will uh, look for secret folder. So whenever I will change uh, something, some of the, you know, will do update the secrets, the secrets also will be deployed, but environments is also a very important thing. And if I look into this base thing, there's multiple resources that will be available between environments, and there's some of the customizations that will, will be available for development environment and uh, production environment, particular case. So um, I do have uh, my uh, cloud um, definition of my um, Confluent Cloud. I do have a definition of my microservices here, like order services, and some of this information will require some of the secrets that will be also attached here. So application client, application jazz config that will be attached here from, from another um, those secrets will be created by uh, another component, but those secrets are important for, for my application. So my uh, Confluent Cloud uh, will be available to, um, to deploy those kind of things. And also I can do customization for particular environments, like uh, the production cluster will be pointing to production Kafka cluster, and the development cluster will be pointing to development cluster. So let's talk about how we can turn, um, so there's no, there's no, like, uh, uh, there's no way how I can, um, connect, um, there's no way how I can uh, take some of the um, uh, cloud CLI thing and run this inside Kubernetes. I need to have something that will make this uh, the cloud native or like a Kubernetes native. So that's why the next thing that we're gonna be talking about right now, it's so-called uh, cCloud operator that actually uh, will be uh, integrated also with a Kubernetes API as long as uh, something happens um, in, um, in the Kubernetes side of things. Uh, the, uh, there would be a component called shell operator that's um, super simple to use. Essentially, it's the, the base image that already handles interaction with Kubernetes. And after that, you just provide a shell file, shell script, uh, that will be invoked uh, according to some of the lifecycle rules. If there's some resource was changed, we'll call one thing in the shell script. Uh, if, if another change will change, we'll call another thing from the shell script. Now, and uh, based on particular environment, it allows to uh, cloud CLI to interact uh, with, with, the, with the cluster. So, um, same thing happens with uh, Kafka Connect operator when we need to create the connection to uh, MySQL database, and after that uh, we um, we go in and say, hey, there's uh, some of the change that happened on, on the Kubernetes side of things, um, and after that uh, my Connect operator will be uh, responsible for, say, increasing number of instances and or whatnot. Um, I will uh, also try to show this in in a second. Um, so let me quickly show uh, this uh, this demo. There is an environment that I want to create for my application. So this environment uh, will have a specific name and um, config map object this is something that a shell operator will be listening to. And whenever a new config map will appear in Kubernetes cluster, and I'll just do uh, say um, config map, there would be a bunch of config maps that deployed in my, um, in my in my environment, so I'll just do key get config map, um, and I'll just do Kafka Kafka DevOps cloud environment uh, out uh, say YAML. Now, so that's what I was showing in editor. So this config map will be uh, invoked by a shell operator and the shell operator will execute all these commands uh, with a specific shell script that is provided uh, by uh, us as the developers of this, uh, this operator and it will declaratively go and create all these resources. So in this particular case, it will go and create this environment called Kafka DevOps. Inside this Kafka DevOps environment that create this microservices orders cluster, once again, if we go in here, it's going to be a um, microservices orders. It's a cluster. Um, there would be a Kafka DevOps cloud environment. Where is this? Uh, that's environment name, Kafka DevOps. Um, also, it will provision a scheme registry component that is required for some of the um, some of the applications. And now, inside this cluster, I will create a set of topics that I my application needs to use. So. That's that's something that we're going to be um, that something that was going to be deploying here, and so all these topics are here. Some of the topics are my application already created. 
some of the topics that we created uh, from this uh, from this config. So there's um, uh, also um, application uh, access control lists that allows to different application to interact with topics and so forth and so on. So those are things that would be there um, as well. Now, um, the next thing is that we're going to be talking is how to, you know, properly scale and uh, something that I uh, mentioned uh, briefly in, um, in the previous, uh, previous slides. I tried to do this like uh, through, um, um, not, not through um, my uh, GitOps pipeline, but rather I went and did something stupid with um, the manual change of resources. So. If I go in my uh, GitHub, and this is my environments in my dev environments, uh, I'm going into connect, and inside my connect service, I can define the number of replicas. Like I will do this through uh, this guy, uh, say number of replica two, scale, scale connect, um, and in this case, uh, I will just do commit directly to this branch, so my flux operator uh, will pick up this change immediately. Now, inside uh, my application, so if I go here, back to my uh, Kubernetes cluster, so what I will see, I will just see just the only one, uh, my connect service should be, um, should get another, uh, another instance of this application. Uh, should be deployed, let's see if, uh, if we can do this manually. So I can do k okay, uh, edit uh, deployments connect service. Now it should be set replicas three. Um, we will wait for some some time, um, and um, while we wait, um, our should bring another connect service here. Um, also, let's take a look in. Um, in a flux, if the flux was able to uh, read uh, refreshed, uh, now after that I switch to uh, Google Cloud Console and I see the services for my uh, Kubernetes cluster. I see my Connect service and my uh, number of pods uh, went to. So this is what um, my flux. Flux CD operator did so. I changed this in my um, in my Git repository, uh, and it triggered some deployment that happened on the Kubernetes side of things. So that's how you scale. That's how you properly do this. And most importantly, in my uh, repository now, I know um, who did this and when he did this, um, and uh, what happened here. So that's uh, that's pretty awesome in my opinion. All right, so. Um, that's pretty much it for today. So if you want to learn a little bit more about this, I'm always available uh, to share uh, some of the additional information, but there's a better place where you can learn this stuff. It's called developer.confident.io. If you want to learn things about Kafka, Kafka Stream, Stream Processing, KSQL DB, and other things, please check this out, developer.confident.io. It's my second favorite place on the internet. And if you want to know why it's uh, my favorite <laughs> my favorite, uh, second favorite place on the internet. Uh, go watch uh, this uh, this video on this link, and I hope you will uh, enjoy this. Thank you so much for being with me uh, in this conference. Do not forget to um, to follow me on Twitter if you're interested in these topics and ask your questions. You can send me a DM all the time. So Twitter is somewhere somewhere here, somewhere on the screen. Um, do not forget to uh, tweet about the awesome conference and praise uh, my presentation. And I am uh, will be waiting you every week, um, on the, every Tuesday. I also do a live streams in the Confluent YouTube channel, and I would love to see many of you there. And uh, with this, as always, have a nice day, and I'm open for advanced interrogation, aka ask me anything type of session. Good luck. Talk to you soon. Bye.